I'm going to apologize again. I'm going to butcher her name. Diane Smokrowski, yes. who is the 2013 Kansas Teacher of the Year, who's going to speak to us for a couple of minutes. And you're also available most of the day today to kind of go into some of the sessions and visit with some of you if you need to, if you'd like to talk to her. Are you excited? School's out. <laughs> How many of you have been out uh, since the middle of May? Some of you get out really early now. How many of you went on vacation already and came back? Yeah? I, I have to envy those people who get out early because you get to go in the off season. You know, everything's cheaper when you travel. But um, most people just call me Mrs. Smoke. It's a lot easier to remember than that crazy last name. And I do teach here in the Andover District, so I want to welcome you to well, okay, I'm biased, but my favorite district in the state. <laughs> and what you're going to experience the next couple of days is going to be very interesting in the fact that, my friends, we now get to teach when it's fun again. Who remembers teaching before NCLB? We're going back to it, my friends. It's exciting. Before ABCD, we had the choice where kids could think and make argumentation and collaborate together. It actually goes way back to what I call sandals in the sand with Socrates. Asking those deep questions, working on curiosities, and then doing research based upon that. Plus the students get to speak to authentic audiences. How many of you remember this when you were in school? You had to do a country report, or you had to do a state report, or a biography report? Take that moment, go back in your past. You remember that? Okay. Where did your information generally come from? Encyclopedias. You know, most of us, who remembers the Encyclopedia Britannica? <laughs> but if your library was really cool, what did you have? The World Book Encyclopedia. And some of us who, you know, you were kind of a poor family, your mom and dad bought the Funkin' Waggles at the grocery store. Who had those? You got one of you, I am not alone. <laughs> We would go pull facts directly out of encyclopedias and then we would recite those facts as a public discussion for our peers. Do you remember that? And then there was probably some creative point, like the elevation, the elevation map, where you had the cardboard as the different elevation levels came in, you painted your country. Do you remember that as well? Your dad did it for you, so you got an A. Yeah. Mom and Dad still have the presentations <laughs> to this day. Uh, I personally chose Greece, and my dad still curses me many years later that I chose a place with over 100 islands to make a relief map on. But it was a, I, he got a great A plus on that. I watched it and he did a wonderful job. The trouble with even doing that was, were we really having a personal connection to the learning? Questionable. Now. If you are going to do the country reports, we ask the students, what do you want to know? What are you curious about? They might say, well, you know, I wonder what people can do for fun there. Well, that's usually something that we made on that worksheet. Or I'm, I'm curious as, you know, what do these people do for a living? Out in Greece, there's a lot of water. I don't know if I'd be working real hard. <laughs> you know? I'd be having a great time. It's those students starting with those questions and then going to find the answers with your guidance. But here's the one point that's even cooler with that, is now we have tools to make research go deeper than what we thought before. Instead of going to encyclopedia, we now can video conference with somebody in any country. We can have students dialogue with each other using things, who uses Edmodo in here, or Schoology or any sort of device like that. Your students could create collaborative group sessions and talk to other classrooms in a teacher-protected environment. Our students can now be experts. Are our students in Kansas different than students in Miami? Are they? Are they different than students in Maine? Denver? Some of us, especially those of us who don't live in urban environments. Our students have different perspectives. What about students in Malaysia or Australia? Are our students experts on our region and perspectives of the United States? 
Well, it's a different perspective than other places around the world, so now your students can be experts as well. Or think about this one. You and your students partnering with places like museums and colleges, university staff, companies, and having those students investigate and talk with experts who do those jobs every single day. How powerful would that be for your students? That would be kind of crazy, I think. What if your students dare ask the really big questions? Like, why are we not getting enough funding and education to get what we deserve to have? And they go ask the people who make those decisions. Does the kid card work, my friends? <laughs> always. But <laughs> it always works. Because people listen to them more than they listen to us. And if they have the questions, they deserve the right for an answer. Would you agree? Okay. These are the experiences that will happen with Common Core. I have a teacher that teaches over at Andover Middle, just on the other side of the parking lot. Some of you may have parked over there. And she's a sixth grade advanced or sixth grade uh, at-risk math teacher. And so she's been doing some of these concepts with Common Core in her classroom. And she came to me and she said, Smoke, you know, I want to make these real-world connections in my math, and I'm getting ready to do ratios and percents and decimals and all of those fraction kinds of things. And myself being an ELA teacher going like, okay, let me make a draw a picture of what that looks like. Okay. I said, all right. She says, usually we do the double the recipe thing, and that's been cliche. It's, you know, people have done it over and over again. And so many of my students just go to the restaurant and order. They don't make food anymore. Is that relevant for some of us? Because 1-800-Pizza Hut works really well. <laughs> I said, well, why don't you put that out on your social network and see if you know somebody who uses these in their real world? She says, do you think that might work? I said, hmm. Well, let me ask you here. You ever heard of six degrees of separation? Yes? No? Between myself and any six people in this room, we can talk to anybody in the world and make those connections for our students. I'll prove it to you. How many in here know somebody in Brazil? Raise your hand. Okay. Back here. Is it direct one-to-one, -one, or do you know somebody to get to somebody? Know somebody. Okay. So that's two degrees of separation. Who else knew somebody in Brazil? How many people would it take? One or two degrees? One. Okay. Guess where the next Olympics for the summer are going to be? Brazil. How amazing would that be for the students to talk about what they are doing to get ready <coughs> for World showcase. Okay, how many of you know someone in the federal level of government? Okay, works maybe even in DC? What is, how many degrees of separation by fingers would it take for you to get a hold of this person? One, one, one. Does anybody know anyone in Hollywood? Okay, by fingers, six degrees of separation, how many would it take to get a hold of them? One. These people are in the career of digital storytelling. What if they were talking to our English language arts students about the power of a story? And does it cost anything, my friends? No. Is that in your price range? Freeze in my price range. Okay. So she puts it out on her network and she says, has anybody used these concepts in math in their career? And less than 24 hours, she gets an email message through Facebook that says, hey, Stacy, I use those every day. I make those digital billboards in Wichita. <coughs> And that's somebody she went to high school with, friends. Okay. He says, yeah, I, I, I do that every day. And so she sent me a text message and she said, do you think that he would talk to my kids? I was like, all you have to do is ask him. And she did and sent me another text. He said, yes. I said, okay, now ask him if he'll work with your students to create something. Do you think he will? Give it a go. He said, yes. I said, okay. Now ask him if he will challenge the students to do something for one of his billboards. And she said, do you think he will? He said, yes. And he came in, the two, the two of them together designed a project so that when he came in, he challenged the students to use the exact same requirements he gives to every marketing person. Your image, you're going to create an image for my digital billboard. Two thirds of it has to be image, a third of it has to be text, it has to be in these certain fonts, ratio, you use a golden ratio, and all of these things. And you students 
We'll create something, and if I like it, and it passes the rubric that we as a whole class determine as a good piece, I will put it out of our community. Now let me tell you, these are the students who do not like school. They're in remedial math, doing real world concepts of math. And the student said, Mom, I made that. It's mine. And you know what? Math is rocking awesome. How many of you would love to hear your kids say that? And those questions, when am I ever going to use this? You've heard that a few times. I've had experience. Guess how many nonfiction texts they look at to understand what the golden ratio was? Guess how much writing was done to come up with drafts one, two, three, four, until they found the exact piece they wanted? And is it something that's going to live with them forever? I would say so. And I will tell you that teacher is now completely addicted into collaboration. And every week, whatever the concept is in math, she finds an expert who uses it and talks to her kids. And it costs her absolutely nothing. That is the power of Common Core. And I'm excited for you to go and explore some of these things today. May the force be with you. Everybody hold your hands up like this. Cyber high five. Go rock the next two days. Thank you.